Well, it's a calm day, and it's October of 1939, and I'm pretty hyped. I just knocked out one freighter and two tankers that hit my quota for the uh, this latest patrol I'm on. I'm not even sure if this is my third patrol or fourth patrol. Like many of you, I, I had a few patrols, and I modded the thing with a... Uh, non-save type mod and I had to start over again and now I'm not sure if this is my fourth time out or probably my third time out but uh, I tell you it's been a difficult rough time of it because my last patrol I wasted I think all of my torpedoes and didn't hit anything uh, I don't know what my excuse was what was going on it's so embarrassing uh, you know Maybe I should just lean over like this guy and take a smoke and think about whether or not I should be in the Navy. But nevertheless, I uh, I couldn't hit anything. End up sinking uh, my uh, quota with the <laughs> with the guns, you know, with the deck gun. Thank goodness I found the single thing here or there. I took a lot of damage. Uh, part of the thing is maybe I panicked. Maybe I. Uh, uh, Got, a, got on a convoy and panicked because there was some there seemed to be more patrol ships than there were warships than there were uh, freighters and and uh, twice I got I got down to where I didn't even think I would survive twice I don't know how I made it through it I, I one of the things I promised myself was the next time I got back to port I was going to make sure I carried enough med kits I only had three or four, and I needed, I needed every last one of them. And now I'm carrying a bunch of med kits. Because uh, if, if you get knocked down, and you you got to send your guys in to do some repair work. Uh, they're going to work until they drop, and you're going to need the med kits. I found that out, and I got extra parts. <laughs> I ran out of parts. On my second knockdown, on, a, on my second convoy, uh, missed everything uh, and I'm talking about my last patrol I, I got knocked down the second time didn't think I was going to survive got the water pumped out used up my last med kit oh gosh I lost two sailors but didn't lose any of my officers and I gotta confess I gotta confess uh, one of the things that I did was I uh, I uh, I didn't play uh, you know dead is dead I didn't play dead is dead I went back to a, a previous save it, uh, I gotta tell you I always play dead is dead but if you want to learn how to behave in emergency situations when you're down you're deep you're in trouble and you just wanna you, you wanna learn how to uh, to do all the things that are necessary to survive the best way to do it is, you know, let yourself get, <laughs> not let yourself get killed, but if you're in, if you're in that survival situation, and you do get killed, go ahead and and, and try it again. And I, I did uh, a, a second and I think a third round, I got, I survived. But uh, what I learned from that was tremendous. Uh, you know now maybe I have the skills I know have the knowledge I know the and it's not just you know knowing how and, and having the smarts it's, it's knowing that what needs to be done in gameplay uh, I know what to do but how do I get it done in, in gameplay especially if you're doing like I'm doing in first person view and uh, one of the things if you're down and you're and you're you got guys behind the bulkheads and locked up and they're working you can't go out to the se uh, sectional screens and see what's going on you don't know what's going on behind that bulkhead and, and so first person view in those uh, emergency situations uh, I was on the floor of the ocean thank goodness in both times I was in shallow water where I can only go 70 meters deep I think uh, 100 at one point at the most but between uh, 50 and 100 and, and, and as I moved along trying to creep away took a long time but that's the that's the beauty of this game the excitement of the game 
I see too many people just uh, leaving port and, and zipping out to the to their convoy and knocking down their ships. I think that's very boring. Um, you know, take your time and smell the salt. Get yourself wet in the breeze on the ocean. Rock the waves a little bit, and gosh, en enjoy the game and 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 learn how to, you know, learn what happens when you get hit and you're down and and the sacrifice you make because you know uh, if you go after a convoy that the, the patrol ships are going to come after you and you know you're taking a risk you know the water's shallow but thank goodness it wasn't too deep that you would have died right off and, and you know and to survive those things um, eh, that's that's the reward that's that's what you're looking for and you know that's that's what I love one of the keys I like the best is the end key. If I don't want to get my guy off of what he's doing, he's not doing much, is he? But if I don't want him to stop what he's doing, uh, I can view in first person what I want to view through his eyes and then hit the end key and then go make my way around the, the sub. Um, and so, but I want to talk to you specifically about uh, managing the crew because uh, uh, you know on this third or fourth patrol uh, for this this particular uh, time uh, uh, not counting the first few times and a few of the tutorials uh, my crew management uh, skills are getting better and uh, and I want to and I don't know that I know everything yet I'm, I'm still learning and hopefully if some of you know some things you comment below as well um, but let's take a look at the uh, crew management for a bit because I want to talk specifically what to do, uh, what I do uh, uh, with crew management with seven officers. So um, going here and we see our seven officers and oh if you know before I do that let's exit this and I want to show you something. I want to show you uh, map view would be the easiest. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've read a lot about people having difficulties getting uh, the seventh officer. Um, be honest with you, I wanted to have seven right off, and I can I couldn't even get the sixth one. And then after a couple patrols, I got the sixth. And then after the third patrol or, or whatever. Uh, or this this patrol, I end up getting the seventh. But it's important to get the right the right mix of office officer and I almost made a mistake and pick up the wrong guy so what is the mix so I got uh, you know if you don't know you can move these guys around wherever you want them to sit so I got them you know from the right to the left you know my captain so of course you have your captain you notice your captain has a little metal with the kind of a badge next to it when you go to uh, recruit a new officer uh, that's what you're gonna look at. You're gonna look at whether or not it's a leader with the with the metal, the badge metal, kind of the Iron Cross metal, or if it's a mechanic with the little mechanic bars, and uh, or if it's a radio guy with the radio signal. So um, the mix I like and that I found, and maybe some of you have a different mix, but I like to have three leaders uh, if I'm gonna have seven, because I want one of them to be a navigator and that is uh, you know it's kind of funny at the moment this fella here um, Wolfgang Wolfgang Boucher he's navigating uh, but if you notice my navigation up here is 150 percent so my navigator isn't even bothering he wants to get out and get some fresh air and he's out there watching and since he's out doing a watch the other fella picked up and uh, and is doing navigation uh, even though we don't don't really need him to uh, he's a funny guy he he does uh, once in a while he gets tired of just uh, being on a sub and he goes out and he plays with the deck gun <laughs> and I I'll show you that in a minute when I get to the crew management screen but I wanted to show so I get I have uh, the captain I will have two other leaders besides the captain in order that one could be almost full-time navigator, I'll have uh, two mechanics and two radio men. 
and that way and I have two shifts and with those two shifts I can rotate so every time um, I'm off shift I got somebody who can do the watch and you know because before I had my nav before I had picked up a uh, boucher uh, Huffman always had to do the watch and couldn't do the navigation and I was sleeping and so my navigation always got down, you know, below 50. And then I'd have to force them to go get navigation done when I, and not have anybody on watch. And that was the, that's the struggle maybe some of you are having. So uh, in order to always have somebody on watch, I got myself a navigator. And Huffman got promoted. Uh, he, he, uh, he's actually, I think, the most skilled guy I have right now. And uh, he's, he's my full-time navigator. Uh, although him and his buddy have just swapped in order to, you know, make my video strange. Um, but then I was having difficulty because this Nod, Nod drove me nuts. I mean, my first patrol, I thought, what's wrong with this guy? He, he, I can't get him to work. He doesn't do anything, you know. And he was my torpedo guy. And, uh, and, and then I realized it. So I'm learning a lot now. I got to tell you, in crew management, I learned so much by listening to what you all have to say, uh, and I've listened uh, on, on you know YouTube videos on on crew management, and and you all have different opinions and ways of doing things, and uh, some of them uh, I preferred over others, but they all had good input, um, and but now I'm finding that I've gone my own route uh, using a lot of that setting it up with one of the one of the one of the recommendations um, of course you could always use the the vanilla rec recommendations that are inputted for you I don't even remember what those were I wish I took a screenshot so I can go back and see what they were so I can so I can criticize it or even say hey that was smart I don't even know I, I'll have to start a new career just to find out what those are but uh, I, I did use, a, I did take a screenshot of somebody's video of a recommendation, started with that, and then found out that things weren't getting done. Things were much better than they were, I mean, some things weren't getting done. And that's when I, uh, for example, uh, this fellow Nod, you know, he, he nodded off most of the time. So, he, you know, he almost has a nickname now for not doing anything. And uh, he was my tor torpedo guy. And, you know, it's funny, if you if you look at these guys, and it shows you what skills and abilities that, you know, what, what things they can do right here. And I hit the tab key, and it brings this up, as you know. And uh, he can do diesel engines, not just torpedoes. And my, my uh, mechanic I always have on the engines, he can do torpedoes if need be. So uh, one of the major things I changed is... Make it sure, and the radio guys do radio, and the two of them, uh, when everybody's up, you know, uh, they work together. And, you know, between surface radio and uh, hydrophones. But, um, and, you know, notice they can also be a helmsman. So if you're underwater and you want some stability, you know, at periscope depth, you can, you can get one of these guys to be a helmsman. And, uh... But now it's wonderful because now I got two, two, and two for my six officers besides myself, besides my captain. I have the full time navigator. So, how do I set that up? Let's take a look. So, in tasks, I guess you can start with uh, the captain. I don't really want the captain doing much. So, you know, he. Uh, as you can see, all the way over here, we'll, we'll scroll out of this, but you can see uh, um, Amos Nod. Uh, I renamed him to Amos, and uh, I gave him a 12 on the med kit uh, in case somebody needs help. Uh, so I, I appointed. I don't know how well that's wor working for me. It looked like it was. And then uh, somebody suggested making rest a high priority because you want them to, you want them always rested. And maybe that made sense, and I've been doing that. Uh, but other than that, you know, this uh, this cook stuff, you know, Huffman likes to cook once in a while, I guess. I, 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 gave, him, I gave him a six on the cook. Now, 
Uh, this is where 11 is the highest and, you know, 1 would be the lowest. You could set these numbers up uh, the way you want. Uh, one person, you know, does like 1 through 5 or 1 through 6. And uh, I don't know whether or not being in the red means anything, but I'm afraid it does. <laughs> so I don't like having red numbers. It, it, I know everything's relative, and, and yet... Um, um, I find more granularity in, in, in having, you know, a dozen numbers or close to a dozen numbers to play with. So uh, you can notice, so the the captain here, I don't give him a lot to do. Uh, in fact, I set, I don't even want him to do navigation unless it's absolutely necessary. And so I, I give him like a five on that. I want him to be watched. If he's doing anything, I want him to be watched and... And I'm not sure what the calm down thing does. <laughs> but, you know, I think maybe that's a leadership thing to keep the crew uh, calm. And so I want them to be uh, encouraging the crew, either with a whip or with a soft voice, one or the other. Uh, so I I'm going to keep it over on this side because I don't think you need to look over here anymore on, from the med kit beyond. Um you know, and so the captain has m not much to do except for command and uh, be on watch. So Hoffman, then I give him eleven. I, I, uh, he's got that as priority. And then if everything's fine with navigation, I give him a nine for uh, for watch. So he will do watch. That's kind of high uh, when he's not resting. Or needing of rest and I find my guys don't need rest uh, um, you know if everything's a normal and we're not in attack mode uh, everybody gets the amount of rest they need and we'll take a look at the schedule in a minute but so this sets him as navigator he's got nothing else to do other than uh, being navigating and watch and then uh, then my other leader he's gonna rotate with Hoffman as far as uh, schedule goes and so uh, he will be on watch as a priority also encouraging the crew as well as if there's navigation needs to be done he, he gets a nine on navigation so he will pick up navigation um, particularly you know and this is interesting if there isn't any navigation to be done Hoffman will go ahead and start watch and I got their schedules overlapping. So if Hoffman's on watch, that's probably why Wolfgang right now is doing uh, navigation because Hoffman's up there watching. So he, uh, you know, he decides that he's gonna he'll, he'll take a look at that. Also, if he gets bored, he gets on the gun because I gave him a seven on the gun, <laughs> and it's kind of fun. He'll get on the gun once in a while, so that's fine. Uh, Hurst, Weber, and um, He's my engine guy, so he'll get a nine on engines, and so he oh he's always on engines, and he doesn't have uh, other than a repair. He's got nothing else that I give him, so you know whenever he's up, he's on the engines. I guess I could give him a higher number, but relatively speaking, uh, you know that's his highest number as it is, and then when he's not running the engines. I had difficulty because when he wasn't up, then the engines would be, you know, I couldn't go full uh, flank speed. I can only go, uh, I can go full speed sometimes, I think, and, but I couldn't go flank speed. Uh, so now, now that Amos, Mar Tor Mar he's my torpedo man, uh, I got him a nine on torpedoes, but I gave him even a higher rating for engines. So... Uh, he, he, this seems to be working. I'm always tweaking this and changing it. If I find that torpedoes aren't ready in time, uh, then maybe I'll have to tweak this again. But I find that putting him a, a 10 on engines, um, uh, he's he's on the engines and he, and he maintains those torpedoes. And I think that's one of the things I found was in my first couple patrols, he wasn't doing anything because... He'd knock out the torpedoes, get them heated, get them in there, and get them everything in situated and waxed down and greased up and all that stuff. And uh, him and a couple guys, and 
and then he'd sit around and do nothing for the rest of the day. And so uh, now I, I give him priority on the engines and between uh, these two having rotating schedules, never have any difficulty uh, going to any speed I need to do. So that's been it. That's been my the what's working really well for me. And then, of course, the top two guys here, um, not the top in priority or rank or anything, but uh, these two officers are the radio officer and my technician officer, but both of them with the radio skills, and I give them their priority on radio. And <clears throat> one of them uh, having the, the med kit. So that's it. Now, you want to look at the schedule. Uh, just, just quick here uh, if you're interesting uh, eight sailors and eight sailors on each shift I know that's 16 sailors but I don't under, quite understand the math on this because if I go nine and nine somehow it we I don't know why we end up not having the, the proper number of sailors but if I go eight and eight maybe somebody can explain that to me we get the proper number of sailors on each shift. Uh, going higher numbers on this doesn't give you, uh, uh, you know, doesn't give you nine or ten sailors on the, on the shift. Actually, the higher you go, for some reason, it, it, I don't know what happens. I ends up putting more off. But you know, I at first I thought was, you get, you have to split it between all of these because the you got two sailors helping the captain, two sailors helping Hoffman, one sailor with the other officer, and uh, I always have two sailors on the uh, engine. And that's why, uh, let's see, this, uh, well, Amos only gets one. Maybe he needs two. I don't know. I'm going to be fooling with these. But, you know, I thought, well, for for any particular shift, if you, if you count them up, two here and um two here that's four and then uh, not counting these are these officers are different shifts and maybe one more would be five and uh five and uh five of your sailors are going to be sucked up by officers possibly and so between that and the number of leftover sailors on a shift uh, would be four for one shift if nine officers were on each shift boy I think I'm rattling on and maybe be more confusing but uh, all of what I'm saying is if you try to add these up and make sense of it it just doesn't seem to work even if I have five of them working the officers on a shift and four more to give me nine and I change this from eight sailors to four I, it doesn't seem to work so I don't know why but what I got here seems to do a wonderful job and I'll show you what I mean if you go down the right corner here this should show you I got 11 of 18 sealers on duty right now and this you know you know you would think you have if you uh, did it right you think you have 9 out of 18 so please somebody explain that to me but uh, you can also see uh, in, in this who, who they are um, Who's doing what? Felix is cleaning, and David Peters is observation, and Derek is galley, and Alwyn Peters, and Eric Lang. You can see each one's on valves, one's on uh, uh, Hellsman Station. Them, so you see what each of them are doing. So that's uh, let's go back to crew because you want to see the schedule. So here's my schedule, and I'll let that sink in for a minute. Uh, morning shift, I have two shifts. There's six-hour shifts. You're on six, off six, on, uh, uh, well, yeah. It's really two shifts, not real. Uh, it says morning and morning and, and evening. I tried to change the names, and I ended up screwing it up, but so it doesn't matter. So, yeah, on six, off uh, six, that kind of a thing. And they rotate between the two uh, for my sailors. Now, my officers, just so you can gather, uh, the two radio guys are going to be rotated, right? 
Um, the reason why I give a free time that's non-rest time is if they need rest, they can rest. If they can help out, there's a little overlap on shifts. Uh, so there's some, uh, you know, shift sharing here. Same thing here and here. So um, however you want to do it, uh, that seems to work for me. But, you know, I always got a radio guy on 24-7. And then going down to my mechanics on the engines i always have somebody on the engines as you can see 24 7 and i also have a little overlap now my three officers this is interesting i'm fooling around with this i'm not saying that this is uh what i'm going to end up having but i want overlap with my officers but i want it 24 7 covered and uh you know, so um, pretty much when I'm talking about watch, I'm talking about Wolfgang and Born. Though you know that's your captain there at the bottom, and Wolfgang between those two, I got 24/7 watch. And and I got Kurt doing navigation. And if navigation's fine, and only if navigation's fine, then he'll he'll help out with watch. So um, that's 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 the schedule as of now until I change things. Tasks we looked at that task on sailors. Uh, just in case you wanted to see that, didn't want to get off and you're not being able to see this. Um, I, for a while, had nothing on observation scope, and I found that that doesn't mean a thing. As long as you have an officer who has sailors helping him, and he's doing navigation or he's doing watch, uh, particularly if he's doing watch, if your officer's doing a watch and he's on one of the scopes, one of the other sailor that's helping him would be on the other scope. Unless you already have an officer on the other scope. This gets to be frustrating because if I'm trying to pop a, the attack scope up and down with the patrol boat. I don't want some, you know, some loading or uh, popping up the observation scope and keeping it up. You know. So, uh, I don't, the, <laughs> the way I solved that. Well, one was, I wondered if giving it a priority of one is better than just being grayed out altogether. Because being grayed out altogether, I don't, I don't know how that gets read, because they they still show up on that scope if you're if you're helping if they're helping an officer. I almost rather give it a priority of one, and then it, relatively speaking, it's going to force him to do something else first. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. This is yet to be seen. But the answer to that is if you got one of you guys on watch and you don't want his the sailors to help him uh, pop up a scope or whatever, just remove them. Remove them. Uh, during, during the time that you're under attack with patrol boats, take those sailors off of the watch. And that's what I do. Uh, but on, on a normal day, uh, I like them to help. So, um, that's that's what I got for you. I hope that wasn't too long, but there's a lot out there on crew management. And uh, just wanted to share what I found. Uh, I found that uh, what's out there has been very helpful, but still had some things going on. Uh, one of the latest things I found was... Uh, I got a notice I never got in all my patrols, and the notice was that the the, uh, the submarine interior was getting uh, was getting dirty, <laughs> and uh, we needed to get somebody on cleanup crew. So uh, I uh, <laughs> I had to resolve that and find out why somebody wasn't cleaning. So that's when I went back into the uh, the sailors the crew management over to the sailors task and made sure we had somebody on cleaning. 
um, uh, which with a little higher priority than I had before. I think I had it as a, uh, I don't remember, it was low priority, it was in the red, now I give it a higher priority. So things are changing, <laughs> things are changing and, and uh, I am so happy um, that uh, I just sunk three freighters. I don't know what happened that last patrol. Every single torpedo missed. And oh, I did want to say that I think what was going on was uh, I had downloaded the TDC mod and I really wasn't using it. I just downloaded it because I wanted the, the stopwatch and and then I was later maybe I was going to use it, but I had no desire to use it. And uh, I, I screwed up. Uh, you know, if you don't use the TDC mod, then you got to make sure you, you flip that switch and turn it off and make sure it's in the red. So you know, I uh, I didn't I, re I didn't really desire to use the TDC mod. I think I explained before why is that the way operations work, at least the way I, I you know, I'm not a sailor, I, I, I'm guessing, but, you know, from what I've seen in the movies, right, you know, I have no expertise on this, and I'm sure everybody will shout different things out about it, but the way I see it is the officer on the scope, he's going to be taking those measurements, uh, basically using the scope and calling them out. And when he calls them out, then a lieutenant is going to be over at the computer and he's going to enter what's called out into the TDC, you know. And uh, so it's just a matter of one calling out to the other. So whether you put it in at the scope or you put the information in at the TDC, it's really your preference. I think in actuality... You know, both methods are being used because it's not two methods, it's one method. You have one person at the scope and he's calling out the information and measuring and doing the measurement and calling it out. And then the, another one at the computer inputting it in. So however you want to do it, uh, you know, works. I prefer to use the... The navigational map, I wish there was an attack map. I don't understand the attack map in this game at all. It doesn't make any sense to me. Not sure what's being done with it. Please, somebody explain it to me. If there's anything to explain. But, um, you know, I you know I do all my markings on that, uh, on that navigational world mix map. And make my measurements there and on the scope and then uh, you know do the inputs that's one way of doing it and I still waste the torpedoes but my preferred method uh, is to uh, actually get away from the scope let the officers get on the scope and they will automatically do it themselves but they're slow at it but once you start sinking ships with the officers doing it they get uh, upgrade on their skills and they become quicker at it so that was one of the things I found so I, um, I, I, do, I do enjoy doing that. And I went out this patrol feeling like, I don't know, at the inept after losing all my torpedoes and not being able to do anything. Came out in this patrol, uh, found the convoy, and let my officers do the work. Three attack, you know, three targets, three sinkings. Uh, actually, the one, uh, all the torpedoes hit, uh, two torpedoes for each target. So I had three sinkings, six torpedoes wasted, or not wasted, and one of them didn't sink right away. And I went up and just nailed it with the gun and it finally sank. But all torpedoes were a hit. It was a beautiful thing. I loved it. And I feel like, uh, you know, I'm a man again, and I'm a captain again, and I can go out and, and uh, now finish up my, uh, my patrol and go out to the area I'm supposed to be. But anyway, uh, 
that's my take on crew management really and a little bit of insight of what's happening with me on patrol and if you're feeling a little down because you're everybody's uh, posting these wonderful torpedo hit videos and you're not hitting well I'm here to tell you I had a whole patrol where I I went through all of my torpedoes went back and restocked at another base that wasn't home base picked up more torpedoes and wasted them I didn't tell you that too so hey you're not alone if, you, if you're one of those but uh, as easy as some days as it is was for me today uh, that last patrol nothing went right so anyway uh, thanks for uh, listening and hopefully this helps you a little bit more in the nuances of crew management and a little bit of insight and I hope that you get your seven officers I know a lot of people are having trouble getting that seventh one I didn't have to promote anybody that was taking a long time anyway get everybody up to higher skills but uh, been rattling on here for a while and I'll let you go and we'll see you next time